Number one, simplify the following expression. So feel free to pause the video and try this problem. The square root of 18, we can write it as root 2 times root 9. And the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. x to the fifth times x cubed. We need to add the exponents. 5 plus 3 is 8. And 3 plus 9 is 12. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. We can't simplify root 2 and root 3, but we can multiply them. That's going to be the square root of 6. The square root of x to the 8 is x to the 4th. And the square root of y to the 12 is y to the 6. So the final answer is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. So it's 6 x to the 4th y to the 6 times the square root of 6. And so this is the solution. Number two, simplify the expression shown below. So what should we do in this example? The index number is 2. 45 is basically 9 times 5. 80 is 16 times 5. Now let's divide 8 to the 7 divided by a cube. What's the answer? When you divide by a common base, you need to subtract the exponents. 7 minus 3 is 4. So this is going to be a to the 4th. Now b to the 6 divided by b to the negative 4th. This is going to be b 6 minus negative 4, which is basically 6 plus 4. So that's going to be b to the 10. And then c to the negative 5 divided by c to the negative 8. Negative 5 minus negative 8 is the same as negative 5 plus 8. So this is going to be c to the third power. Now we still have the square root. We can cancel 5. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of a to the fourth is simply a squared. You divide 4 by 2, and you get 2. The square root of b to the 10 it's b to the fifth power. Now we have an even index number and an odd exponent, so we need to enclose this using an absolute value. Now what about the square root of c to the third? We can break that into the square root of c squared times the square root of c. 1 plus 2 is 3. The square root of c squared is c. So this is going to be the absolute value of c times radical c. So therefore, we can write the final answer like this. We could say it's 3 a squared b to the fifth times c root c over 4. And so that's it for this problem. Number 3. Which of the following choices is equivalent to the expression shown below? So we need to FOIL. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative root 3 that's going to be negative 4 root 3. And then we have root 3 times 4. So that's positive 4 square root 3. And then root 3 times root 3. That's 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 4 plus 4 will cancel. They add up to 0. And the square root of 9 is 3. 16 minus 3 is 13. So answer choice C is the right answer. Number 4. Rationalize the denominator. So how can we do that? We need to get rid of the square root function in the bottom of the fraction. To do that, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of x. So on top, it's going to be 8 root 2x. On the bottom, the square root of 2x times the square root of 2x is simply 2x. And now we can divide 8 by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the answer is 4 square root 2x divided by x. And that's all we need to do for this problem. Number 5. Rationalize the denominator. So how can we get rid of the square root in this particular problem? What we need to do is we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of 3 minus root 7 is simply going to be 3 plus root 7. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. 
in order that the value of the entire fraction remains the same. So let's begin by distributing 5. 5 times 3 is 15. And then 5 times root 7 is 5 root 7. On the bottom, let's FOIL. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we have 3 times root 7. Next, negative root 7 times 3. And the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is simply, that's the square root of 49, which is 7. The two middle terms will cancel. 3 and negative 3 adds up to 0. And then on the bottom, 9 minus 7 is 2. So the final answer is 15 plus 5 root 7 divided by 2. And so that's all you need to do for this problem. Number six, what is the value of x in the equation shown below? So go ahead and solve it. So what's the first thing that we should do? The first thing we need to do is subtract both sides by three. And so we're gonna have three square root two x plus six, and that's gonna be equal to 15 minus three, which is 12. Now, before we take the square root of both sides, the best thing we should do is divide by 3. Get rid of the number in front of the radical. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now, at this point, let's take the square of both sides to get rid of the radical on the left. So on the right side, all we have is 2x plus 6. I mean, that's on the left side. And on the right side is 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, that's 16. Now, if we subtract both sides by 6, 16 minus 6 is 10. And if we divide both by 2, x is equal to 5. And so that's going to be the answer to this problem. Answer choice B is the right answer. Number 7, simplify. What is the value of 3 root 72 minus 4 root 50 plus 7 root 32? How can we simplify this expression? Well, it helps to know the perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, and so forth. The highest perfect square that goes into 72 is 36. So you want to break down 72 as 36 and 2. 72 divided by 36 is 2. 25 goes into 50. 25 times 2 is 50. And 16 goes into 32. 16 times 2 is 32. Now, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 16 is 4. 3 times 6 is 18. 5 times 4 is 20. And 7 times 4 is 28. Now, notice that each term contains a square root a square root of 2. So because each of these three terms are like terms, we can now combine the coefficients. 18 minus 20 is negative 2. And negative 2 plus 28, which is the same as 28 minus 2, that's 26. So the final answer is the square root of 2 times 26, or 26 root 2. Number 8, what is the range of the radical function shown below? So let's draw a graph. We know it's going to shift one unit to the left due to x plus 1. If you set x plus 1 equal to 0, and if you solve for x, you'll get negative 1. And it's shifted up three units. So the origin, or the new origin, starts at negative 1, comma 3. Now, notice that we have a negative in front of the radical. So typically, this would reflect over the x-axis. Let's talk about the direction in which it goes. The graph can go towards quadrant 1, towards quadrant 2, 3, or towards quadrant 4. Now, we have a positive sign in front of the x, so it's going to go towards the right. And we have a negative in front of the radical, which I like to think of it as associated with the y variable, so it's going to go down. So it's going to go towards quadrant 4. So here's a rough sketch of the graph. Now let's find the domain and the range. 
the domain is based on the x values. The lowest x value is negative 1. The highest is infinity. So the domain is going to be from negative 1 to infinity. Now the range has to deal with the y values. The highest y value is 3. The lowest is negative infinity. This graph, as it goes to the right, it will continue to decrease. It simply decreases slowly towards negative infinity, but it will get there. So from low to high, the range is from negative infinity to 3, and it includes 3. Therefore, A is the answer to this problem, negative infinity to 3. Number 9, what is the domain of the function shown below? So we have a function with an even index number. If it was an odd index number, the domain will be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. But for this one, there's going to be restrictions. When the index number is even, only positive numbers can be inside the square root function. And 0, if the radical is on top. But because the radical is in a denominator of the fraction, because it's in the bottom, we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. 1 over 0 is undefined. So therefore, everything on the inside has to be greater than 0 but not equal to it. So let's find the important x values that we need. So let's put this in standard order. Negative x squared minus x plus 6. Let's begin by taking out a negative 1. So it's x squared plus x minus 6. Now two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to the middle coefficient 1 is going to be positive 3 and negative 2. So the points of interest are 2 and negative 3. If you set x minus 2 equal to 0, x is 2. And if you set x plus 3 equal to 0, x will be negative 3. So those are the critical points, are the significant points. Now, this function is greater than 0 but not equal to 0. So at those significant points, we're going to have an open circle. Now we need to know which of those three segments the function is positive. So let's try a number greater than 2. Let's try, let's plug in 3. Now 3 plus 3 is positive. 3 minus 2 is positive, multiplied by a negative sign. So a negative times a positive times a positive number is equal to a negative number. So it's negative in this region. Now, if we plug in a number between negative 3 and 2, like 0, it's going to be 0 plus 3 is positive, and 0 minus 2 is negative. Two negative signs will make a positive number. So this is going to be positive. And let's say if we plug in negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative. 3 negatives is equal to a negative. So the answer is between negative 3 and 2. So the domain is from negative 3 to 2 without the use of brackets. So this is the solution. Number 10. Calculate the value of x in the equation shown below. So what should we do first? What you don't want to do right now is you don't want to square both sides because you would have to FOIA 3 plus radical 5 minus x, which will generate another radical. Instead, you want to move the 3 from the left side to the right side. And then you can FOIA the expression. So now let's raise both sides to the second power. Doing it this way will help us to get rid of the radical on the left, which is just going to be 5 minus x. On the right side, we do need to FOIA, though. So x minus 3 times x minus 3. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3, that's negative 3x. This is also negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And if we add the two middle terms, negative 3x minus 3x is negative 6x. Now, let's take everything from the left side and move it to the right side. So let's add x to both sides, and let's subtract both sides by 5. On the left side, we'll have 0. On the right side, it's going to be x squared minus 5x 
and 9 minus 5 is 4. So now let's factor. The two numbers that multiply to 4 but add to negative 5 are negative 1 and negative 4. So it's going to be x minus 1 times x minus 4. So x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4. So we have two potential answers. Now let's double check to make sure that both are correct. Sometimes one might be the answer and not both. The original function is 3 plus the square root of 5 minus x, which is equal to x. So let's start with 4. Let's replace x with 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, so this works. So d is definitely a solution. Now, let's try 1. 5 minus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 does not equal 1. So that is an extraneous solution. Therefore, D is the answer.